up, family? It's your boy Amadu back with another review, and this time I am reviewing the new Netflix sci-fi series, Lock and Key. This one follows three children, Tyler, Kinsey, and Bodie Locke, whose dad was killed under some mysterious circumstances. So their mom, Red from Scandal, decides to take them from Seattle, move them all the way across the country to try to connect with their dad's past life. So they move into his ancestral home called The Key House. Now this show is based off a young adult book series that I had no idea existed. That surprised me because I'm a pretty huge YA novel fan and it got me thinking, does Netflix know my life? I mean, because they, they showed it to my girlfriend who then said, hey, Hey, come look at this show. This seems pretty cool. And the next day, five people were like, yo, have you seen this show Lock and Key? And I'm like, Netflix. Yo. Yo. You got a gift, my friend. I see you. Do, do you see me? And if you do, keep doing it. Because this, this is a pretty damn good show. Now, I don't want to give too much away because the best part of the experience was not really knowing anything about the show and discovering the mystery over its 10 episodes. So what I'm going to do is channel my best Tony Baker impression and give you my key takeaways from the show. Just got to work on the hands and the, you know, he does a lot of pointing and a lot of this, so I got to just... What? No. Nobody wants to see our shitty ass impressions. Okay, well, I'm still gonna give you my takeaways. My first takeaway is why they gotta do little Georgie like that? Young Bodie is played by Jackson Robert Scott, and I swear either he is a glutton for punishment or they're gonna give this kid PTSD. They got him yelling and talking to random strangers in the sewer system again. Georgie. And they even got him sticking his hand down a drain. Didn't you see what happened to... Why? Why do that? That's just mean. My second takeaway is that Harry Potter is still the reigning king when it comes to this young adult genre. Because this entire show, its aesthetic screams Hogwarts. From the look of the key house to this opening scene of this forest mirroring the forest of Dean to this shot at the end of the series looking like the fake ass lighthouse that was put into Deathly Hollows. That lighthouse never existed and still influenced this show to a huge influence of John Williams and Nicholas Hooper's score running rampant up and down every episode to the point where they damn near steal the music from the montage of the DA in Order of the Phoenix and put it into a scene where the Locke children are trying to bring their friends in to help save their world. Any sense? Okay, so your house is full of magical keys. Usually being a copycat kills young adult adaptations, but not for lock and key. And that takes me to my third takeaway. Disney Plus, if you don't make a mother Percy Jackson TV series, we are going to riot. Do it! Do the right thing. Just do it! What they did to Rick Riordan's franchise and its potential with those horrendous movies is a crime and lock and key proves that if you take the time to spread the depth and lore of a series into eight to ten hours instead of trying to cram and rush it into a one and a half to two hour shit show you get quality entertaining material especially for fans of the young adult genre
Lock and Key does carry a lot of the YA tropes you see in teen dramas, especially the, the stupid decision making, except the black kid. You'll know him when you see him. He is the steady voice of reason amongst stupidity and dumb decisions. But you're invested in these stupid decisions because you care about the characters and the time they took to, to build depth into their arcs. And just as much as they showcase the teen drama, they lean just as heavily on the fantasy elements from Jump. The opening scene is full on sci-fi fantasy and it builds a mystery and intrigue that is continued throughout every episode. It keeps you guessing as soon as you think you know, oh, I've seen this trope in a bunch of YA novels. They throw a wrench in there that you're like, hmm, didn't see that coming. From the first second to the last 10 minutes, you want to say, I know exactly what is going on here, and no, I don't. Apparently, I'm wrong. Okay. That was really good. Lock and Key is definitely worth 8 to 10 hours of your TV watching life, especially if you're a fan of sci-fi fantasy or young adult novels, or like me, you're a huge fan of both. With that, I'm giving Lock and Key Season 1 8.5 out of 10. Oh yeah. Shout out to Tony Baker. If you haven't seen his reviews, go see them. Here's the link to his channel. Like his channel, subscribe to it. Just like you should like my channel, subscribe to this channel. Comment down below. Let me know if you've seen this first season, what you thought about it. Do you think they need to treat Georgie better or is he a sadistic little bastard? I don't know. Either way, leave some comments in the comment section below. Hit that notification bell so you never miss the next review, Rue Reaction, or Easy Reviews Podcast. Until next time, folks, I'll see y'all on the next one. Peace.